Welcome to Virtual Piano Recital by Dr. Kim Piano Academy. I'm Dr. Kim. I'm a pianist and instructor for all of the pianists who's going to perform today, Kovi, Audrey, and Veronica. Although we only have been doing this for a year and a half or so, but it feels like this is our new norm or we've been doing this virtual piano recital for forever, <laughs> right? But I know some of you who cannot come to actual in-person piano recital have been really enjoying to be able to uh, be part of their musical journey. Uh, luckily, things are opening up a little bit more. And in fact, I have been teaching some students in person past month and it was wonderful to see some of the students and be able to share music as well. I can imagine maybe next uh, piano recital might be in person um, but even then I will make sure that I find a way to share with all of you that who cannot come either by sharing recordings or uh, live streaming the actual concert for you <laughs> so you can be part of it also uh, I actually have a concert coming up in July that is in person for the first time since last February um, it's called Barclay Theater in Irvine uh, there's talking about opening up for 20 percent capacity for the hall, which is about, I think, a 700 people hall. And, um, it, you know, it, that is the normal to give a concert in person, but it seems like such a dream that I used to dream <laughs> and I forget how it is. And I'm very much looking forward to the concert. And I will let you know about some information um, before before public. So if you are nearby or live in San Diego, uh, or be able to really be there. I definitely want to share the concert with you. Also last year, um, I ran out of excuses not to write my first book, <laughs> which I always wanted to write a book. Um, so I did, which is coming up in August, this August 24th. It will be officially published then um, through everywhere, uh, through actually a publisher called Green Greenleaf Publisher. And you can buy this book um, anywhere that you normally buy uh, your book. It's called Whenever You're Ready. Um, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, and everywhere. And this is very much like a written concert, like. And my students for sure will appreciate the book. And uh, I'm sure you who actually already have some connection contact with me will um, appreciate the book. And I'm very much looking forward to share this book with you. Uh, I will go to LA next month actually recording this book as audiobook. So it will be available as a Kindle audiobook and everywhere that you can purchase. In fact, if you go to my website, jiunkim.com right now, you can pre-order the book if you want to get an uh, autographed copy and about a month before the publishing date, which is you can actually get it by July. So very much looking forward to this uh, book with you, especially with my students. Without further ado, let's get started. As usual, please be part of this chatting and um, sending a lot of emojis for clapping, virtual clapping, and uh, be very supportive uh, of each pianist performance and be part of those energy pack they, they need. And uh, I hope all my students who actually watch this video enjoy um, watching other performers as well as your own performance. So let's get started. Hi, my name is Kobe and welcome to our fourth virtual piano recital. It's kind of crazy that we've had four virtual piano recitals and that COVID's been going on for that long. Now I feel like everything COVID kind of just is starting to feel normal. For example, like I don't really notice when I'm wearing masks that feeling that I used to have when wearing masks. And every time I walk into a place or get out of a place, I just try and wash my hands. And everything just is starting to feel really normal, like nothing ever changed. For my first piece, I'll be playing Mr. Trumpet Man by Martha Meyer. When Dr. Kim first played this piece for me, I immediately knew I was gonna play it because it's just super fast paced and a super fun, jazzy song. And it's really upbeat and it's just super fun to play. Hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
Hi, my name is Audrey Deleese, and my first piece I'll be playing is Chopin's Opus 64, number one, but it's also referred to as the Minute Waltz. So I really like this piece because I think it can be visualized many different ways or imagined many different ways. For example, um, there's one part of the song that's sort of jumpy and a lot of people can, um, I guess, visualize or see this as like a cat's like bell or like a door, just like a door when you open it to the store or just any kind of ringing sound. So I like that you can like have such an open imagination with this song. What I do think of this song, it really reminds me of like weather, I think. Kind of like a story, maybe like a kid's story book where they're like stuck on, stuck on a mysterious place or something. And I think depending on which part of the piece you're at, it really reminds me of like clouds or sun or, you know, sad weather, happy weather. So I'm excited to play this please for you guys. and I'm a 13-year-old pianist. I've been playing piano for six years and I'm very excited to be joining this virtual recital again. So for my first piece, I'll be performing Bach Italian Concerto in F major and it's going to be the first movement. I think this was one of the most challenging pieces I've played because it has very complex feelings, dynamics, and also really hard technique. And I also had a really interesting journey with the piece, because in the beginning, I was really intrigued, the melody sounded really cool, but then I didn't really like it anymore once I started learning it because the technique was really difficult. And then after that, I liked it again. So I had a really, um, I had a constant shift of mindset. I liked the piece and then I didn't like the piece. 
And at some point, I just gave up on the piece. And Dr. Kim came in, and she told me that sometimes you really have to just practice pieces that you don't like and force yourself to like the piece. And in the end, you'll just like the piece. So I think you can use that advice in almost anything you do. Like, for example, in writing, I would use this piece of advice when I'm about to give up, and it helps me go through this hard process. And now with the piece, I feel like I'm really confident with it and enjoy it very much.
now that everything's kind of getting back to normal, there's a couple of things that I'm going to be able to do over the summer again. Um, the first thing, which is my first ever year playing, is doing a lacrosse league during the summer. Uh, I think it's going to be really fun. We got to play in tournaments against other teams in San Diego. And also, I'm going to be going on a backpacking trip to Yosemite. For my second piece, I'm going to be playing Sonatina by Clementi. I like this piece because there's lots of contrast in that dynamic, and it's kind of a peaceful and calm piece that's very gentle and kind of light, but changes and contrasts a lot of the time. Hope you enjoy. For this summer, I actually have summer plans rather than being stuck at home because of coronavirus. So I'm actually going to be visiting more family and 
in the East Coast and just hanging out with people that I haven't hung out with in so long. And I'm so glad that life is getting back to normal and that everyone is getting to experience this again. So the second piece I will be playing for you is Box um, Suite 5. And for me, this piece has always been very butterfly-like, which is kind of ironic because another song I'll be playing you is called Butterfly. But that one has reminded me less of a butterfly than this one. But this one is like kind of beautiful and graceful, and that's why I like it. Kind of reminds me of like just flying, going to flower to flower, thing like that. So I hope you enjoyed this piece. performance, I'll be playing Debussy's Passe Pied. I wouldn't compare this piece to something like train on trains on a track and surrounded by mist because the polyrhythm and the pedal is very disorienting, but then in the heart of the piece is the beat, and I think that would be the train tracks. So this is actually really interesting. I was listening to classical music as background music, and then this piece just popped up on the playlist. And I was like, wow, this is so cool. So my wish a few months ago was to play this piece and learn it. And now um, I have, my wish has come true. And this really makes me think that fate is a real thing because this piece was calling to me and I played it. 
And this is actually one of my favorite pieces I've played so far. For my third piece, I'll be playing Invention Number no. 8 in F minor by Bach. <laughs> <laughs> 
I really like this piece because it's fast paced and just your fingers are always moving. But one of the challenges I had when learning this piece was that it was something called counterpoint. Counterpoint is when your right hand plays a melody and then your left hand follows it a couple measures after. And this made it really hard because there's so many sounds that didn't sound right when I was playing them together and it was just a huge challenge. But in the end result, it sounds really good and fun to play. So my third piece is Edward Grieg's Butterfly. So um, this piece is like constantly moving. There's like super, it's a faster piece for me and it's like kind of busy. And that made me think of this piece as like kind of weirdly enough rain. But since it is butterfly, I felt like I had to interpret it a little bit with a butterfly. So I kind of imagined a butterfly going through rain and Though, I think to the audience, pieces like this sound beautiful, I think, and or ha you think of it as a certain emotion, I think to composers, they might think of this piece differently, and that's kind of what this piece reminds me of. <laughs>
Steven, and I'm an eight-year-old pianist. I'm Bronca's brother, and you might remember me from last recital. So Steven likes to compose a lot. And my recent piece is Sonatina in D sharp minor. I'm very proud of it. It's very hard and has 75 measures. So here's my process of composing a new piece. So I think of ideas in the beginning and sometimes comes from the piano. And I think of a, sometimes think of ideas in the end, but I don't really usually do that. And then I think of ideas in the middle that would fit in the piece, and I do it all on notes light. So our first duet is the Mozart Rondo. It's pretty long as the A, B, A, C, A, D, A form. That's the Rondo form. It has a lot of surprises, and my favorite part is the crossing hands. Which is actually the most difficult part for me because I'm scared of hitting his face. <laughs> Hope you enjoy!
piece I'll be playing is Mozart's Fantasia in D minor. So out of all the pieces, this is um, my longest piece, and I actually really like it. I like how it like kind of goes slower, but you can kind of um, get the music, like process it more. But for me, this piece really reminds me of a ballerina. Like, you know how they have those ballerina plays? Like, um, ones we might all know are, like, Nutcracker. But they're, like, other, like, famous, like, sort of musicals almost of, like, just ballerinas on stage and stuff. And this is kind of what it reminds me of. I have a friend who's actually a ballerina, so it kind of reminded me of her because when I thought of it. But, yeah. It's just so graceful and I think so calm that that's why it reminded me of that. So I enjoy this piece and I hope that you do too. <laughs>
watched a while ago called Soul by Disney and I really felt like connected to this movie because there is a lot of jazzy playing of the piano in it. It really just had a lot of passion and soul in the movie and I feel like that's one of the reasons that jazz is attracted. I'd like to give a shout out to my grandparents from Canada and my grandparents from Seattle. They always come and watch my piano recitals online and they're always so supportive of piano and everything else I do. For my final piece, I'll be playing Birmingham Blues by Martha Meyer. I like this piece because it's a very lazy and super slow and nice piece and there's lots of contrasts and high points and low points where everything just sounds really nice together. Hope you enjoy. piece and my favorite piece I'll be playing Debussy's The Girl with the Flaxen Hair. So this piece I actually listened to it a lot when I was super young. My dad had this playlist of like classical music he would play around the house and for some reason I like specif specifically remember this piece. So when my piano teacher requested me doing this song I was so excited to play it and like learn it myself because I was so used to like hearing it like on soundtracks over the years but when I played the song it really reminded me of like a fairy tale like especially Little Red Riding Hood for some reason <laughs> so yeah this piece just has that like whimsical vibe to me and I think it could be more fairy tale just because I'm it reminds me of like kind of my childhood but yeah I really think this piece is like Reminds me of like castles and <laughs> princesses and knights and things like that that you would read in small books when you're a kid. So I really hope you enjoy my final piece.
happened in many virtual recitals already. And it's very challenging. And sometimes we even have to record so, so long. But in the end, even though it's cringy to watch, we can share our work, we can have family time, and it's fun to watch. So our last piece we're gonna play is the French Waltz. It's both of our favorites. I enjoyed the piece and especially the feelings. Hope you enjoy. As usual, time flies when we have fun. And I really very much enjoy watching all of the pianists today as well. And uh, Kofi, Audrey, Veronica, and Steven, uh, thank you for all of your accomplishments. And I'm very, very proud of you. And I can't wait to continue this journey of making music together. So I'll see you very soon.